morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is June 14th. What day of the year is that? What day of, of the year is June 14th? Man, we are just running right through, running right through the year. 165, 165 days we have been reading the Bible together in chronological order out of the World English Bible Translation. Started in Genesis, went to Job, went to Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st Kings, threw some 1st Chronicles in there. And then today we're going to, or we finished up, I think we're finishing up 1st Kings today, we're going to jump into 2nd Kings. And we're also in Second Chronicles. And then we, we read the Psalms when we thought that they were authored by David during David's life. We read Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, Song of Solomon. And I think one or two Proverbs when we thought they were authored by Solomon when he was alive. And we were reading about him. Psalm by Moses we read when Moses was alive. So we're trying to paint this narrative, paint this picture And what is going on? And that is this, God's promise to Adam and Eve, the seed of the woman, will conquer the seed of the serpent. That there is a way back to God and God himself will provide it. And that this separation between God and man is severe. It is caused by sin, and that sin requires bloodshed. Wages of sin is death. All right. uh, First, second, first, second, second, first, second Kings 1, 1 through 18. So if it's your first time joining us, welcome. If you're, if it's not, welcome back. And you're like, okay, enough with the recaps. Just get into it, bro. I know. I got, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Remember, Ahab was uh, the husband of Jezebel, and they had and, uh, Elijah had told them that you know judgment, I think, was was coming. Um, Ahaziah, I believe that was his son, uh, who took over, fell down through the lattice in his upper room that was in Samaria. Ahab Samaria was the capital of Israel and was sick. So he sent messengers and said to them, go inquire of Baal Zebub, the God of Ekron, whether I will recover of this sickness. But Yahweh's angel said to Elijah, the Tishbite arise, go up to meet the messengers of the King of Samaria and tell them, is it because there is no God in Israel that you go to inquire of Baal Beelzebub? Beelzebub, sorry, Baal Zebub, Beelzebub, the God of Ekron. Now, therefore, Yahweh says, you will not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. Then Elijah departed. Wow. And so it's interesting because we know, for those of you who have read some of the Bible before, remember this was one of the accusations against Christ, right? By the power of Beelzebub, same God, by the power of Beelzebub, he casts out demons. The God of the demons, he casts out demons. They were saying that that the work of the Lord Jesus Christ was satanic in a sense. And the same thing we get here, going to the gods of the age and the gods of these lands that they were supposed to stamp out. And this idolatry was supposed to be gone, but they didn't. The messengers returned to him and he said to them, why is it that you've returned? I said to him, a man came up to meet us and said, and said to us, go return to the king who sent you and tell him Yahweh says, this is very specific, the God of Israel. Is it because there is no God in Israel that you send to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore, you will not come down from the bed where you've gone up, but you will surely die. He said to them, what kind of man was he who came up to meet you and told you these words? They answered him, he was a hairy man and wearing a leather belt around his waist. Kind of like John the Baptist, right? The spirit of Elijah. He said, it is Elijah, the Tishbite. Then the king sent a captain of 50 with his 50 to him. He went up to him and behold, he was sitting on the top of the hill. He said to him, man of God, the king has said, come down. Elijah answered to the captain of 50. If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from the sky and consume you and your 50. Then fire came down from the sky and consumed him and his 50. Remember, this is what the disciples were 
asking Christ about. Like, hey, should we call down fire from the sky like Elijah? Again, he sent to him another captain of 50 with his 50. He answered him, man of God, the king has said, come down quickly. Elijah answered them, if I am a man of God, then let fire come down from the sky and consume you and your 50. Then God's fire came down from the sky and consumed him and his 50. Again, he sent the captain of a third 50 with his 50. The third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and begged and begged him and said to him, man of God, please let my life and the life of these 50 of your servants be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from the sky and consumed the last two captains of 50 with their 50s. But now let my life be precious in your sight. Yahweh's angel said to Elijah, go down with him. Don't be afraid of him. Then he arose and went down with him to the king. He said to him, Yahweh says, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, is it because there is no God in Israel to require to inquire of his word? Therefore, you will not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. So he died according to Yahweh's word, which Elijah had spoken. Jehoram began to reign in his place. In the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the king of uh, kings of Israel? All right, now we're going to jump forward to 2 Kings 3. So we're skipping to... Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, but not like his father and like his mother, for he put away the pillar, the pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he held to the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, with which he made Israel to sin. He didn't depart from them. Now Misha, the king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he supplied the king of Israel with the wool of 100,000 lambs and 100,000 rams. But when Ahab was dead, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. King Jehoram went out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. He went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me against Moab to battle? He said, I'll go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. He said, Which way shall we go up? Remember, this is the same thing that he had said when they wanted to go to war against Syria. He answered, the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched for seven days along a circuitous route. There was no water for the army or for the animals that followed them. The king of Israel said, alas, for Yahweh has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, uh, isn't there a prophet of Yahweh here that we may inquire of Yahweh by him? It's kind of like, whoa, let's not jump to conclusions here that this is from Yahweh. If there's a prophet, let's ask him. One of the king of Israel's servants answered, Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who poured water on the hands of Elijah, is here. So Elisha and Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, Yahweh's word is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha the king, said to the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. The king of Israel said to him, no, for Yahweh has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Elisha said, as Yahweh of armies lives before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I respect the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. When the musician played, Yahweh's hand came on him. He said, Yahweh says, make this valley full of trenches. For Yahweh says, you will not see wind, neither will you see rain. Yet that valley will be filled with water and you will drink both you and your livestock and your other animals. This is an easy thing in Yahweh's sight. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. You shall strike every fortified city and every choice city and shall fall, fell every good tree and stop all springs of water and mar every good piece of land with stones. In the morning, about the time of offering the sacrifice, behold, water came by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. Now when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, they gathered themselves together, all who were, about, who were able to put on armor, young and old, and stood on the border. They rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone on the water, and the Moabites saw the water opposite them as red as blood. They said, This is blood. The kings are surely destroyed, and they have struck each other. Now therefore, Moab to the plunder. 
When they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and struck the Moabites so that they fled before them and they went forward into the land attacking the Moabites. They beat down the cities and on every good piece of land each man cast his stone and filled it. They also stopped all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees until in Kir Haraseth all they left was its stones. However, the men armed with slings went around it and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too severe for him, he took with him 700 men who drew a sword to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his oldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall. There was great wrath against Israel, and they departed from him and returned to their own land. Man, that's, that's something else. Why you? Why you? I don't know. First Kings twenty two forty one through forty nine. First Kings twenty two forty one through forty nine. Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was thirty five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty five years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhi. He walked in all the way of Asa, his father. He didn't turn away from it. He didn't. He didn't turn away from it. He didn't turn away from it, doing that which was right in Yahweh's eyes. However, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he showed and how he fought, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? The remnant of the Sodomites that remained in the days of his father Asa, he put away out of the land. There was no king in Edom. A deputy ruled. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they didn't go. For the, ships, for the ships wrecked at Ezion Geber. Then Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with your servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. And we got to stop right there and then go back to Second Chronicles 20, 31 through 37. 31 through 37. Okay, here we go. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhi. He walked in the way of Asa, his father, and didn't turn away from it, doing that which was right in Yahweh's eyes. However, the high places were not taken away, and the people had still not set their hearts on the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, behold, they are written in the history of Jehu, the son of Hanani, which is included in the book of the kings of Israel. After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, joined himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel. The same did very wickedly. He joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. They made the ships in Ezion Geber. Then Eliezer, the son of Dodavahu of Merashah, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have joined yourself with Ahaziah, Yahweh has destroyed your works. The ships were wrecked, so that they were not able to go to Tarshish. So he wasn't supposed to. Yeah, he wasn't supposed to join with this dude over here. He's yeah, Ahaziah. First Kings twenty two fifty. Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in his father's David's city. Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. All right, so now we're Second Chronicles 21, 1 through 4. Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in David's city, and Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariah, Michael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father gave them great gifts of silver, of gold, and of precious things with fortified cities in Judah, but he gave the kingdom to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram had risen up over the kingdom of his father and had strengthened himself, he killed all his brothers with the sword, and also some of the princes of Israel. And he's like, I'm not letting... I'm not letting anybody get in the way of my reign, of my power. Not here, not any other place. Second Kings 8. So we're jumping forward to Second Kings 8 from Second Kings 3. That's bizarro, but I'm sure we'll, I am sure we'll get it. Second Kings 8, 16 through 22. In the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being king of Judah then, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 32, 32 years old when he began to reign. He reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did Ahab's house, for he married Ahab's daughter. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight. 
However, Yahweh would not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake, as he promised to give him a lamp for his children always. In the days Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king for, over themselves. In his days, there, let, me, let me read that one again. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. Then Joram passed over to Zair and all his chariots with him. And he rose up by night and struck the Edomites who surrounded him and the captains of the chariots and the people fled to their tents. So Edom revolted under the hand of Judah to this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. All right, Second Chronicles 21, 5 through 7. Jehoram was 32 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did Ahab's house, for he had Ahab's daughter as his wife. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight. However, Yahweh would not destroy David's house because of the covenant that he made with David, and he promised to give, and as he promised to give a lamp to him and to his children always. So... Jehoshaphat gives his kingdom or lets the kingdom pass to Jehoram and Jehoram. He does not follow Yahweh. Instead, he's like, he likes what he sees over there with Ahab in Israel, kills a bunch of his sons, marries his daughter, which is strange. And then I guess she didn't have a problem with that, or maybe she was limited in what she could do about it. Probably a combination of things. And uh, he does not incur God's favor. Instead, his wrath upon him. So that that is that that is up for that. And it's crazy. It's hard to keep track, too, of all the things that are going on uh, with this, these uh, political intrigues in the kingdom of is in the kingdoms of Israel and Judah and what's going on and all the infighting. But what are we going to pray for? Well, we're going to pray for Jeff and Marilyn in Asia. They are missionaries there, and they are trying to get Bibles and audio players to those who need them. They asked for his work, for his word, to work, God's word, to work powerfully in people's lives, raising up workers for the harvest. They also want wisdom and energy and responding to church needs, and they need project administration and visa partner work. So, man, I am just all over the place today. My apologies. Reading's bad, praying's bad, talking's bad, whatever. I guess we're, but we still at it. We still are on it and we are doing it. We will not be stopped, I guess. Maybe there's the, there's the lesson. We're just going to keep going. So it's just under 18 minutes now. We are going to pray. If you're driving, please keep your eyes open. Pay attention to the road. Uh, if you're not doing anything dangerous, operating every machine or whatever, close your eyes. And let's pray. If you want to, sorry, you don't have to. And if you got prayer requests, you can always hit me up. Not many noble at gmail.com. Let us pray. Father. Thank you, even for days when eh, we're not feeling it. Please draw us unto yourself. We need you. Give us wisdom. We want to love you. We want to serve you. We want to worship you. All right. We don't want to fall away like these kings who had such testimony, such witness. They had such, such things going on. These kings in Judah and Israel in the promised land. They had heard from God's prophets. They had seen miraculous works and still their hearts were hard. Let it not be so with us. Let us hear your word. Let us do your word. Let us receive your word. Let us seek your face. We lift to you, Jeff and Marilyn, missionaries in Asia, that you would give them grace to bring Bibles and audio players uh, to um, the people that they are ministering to and that they are serving, and that once they hear this word and they read your word, that it would work powerfully, that it would change their lives, that you would save sinners, that you would draw them unto yourself in a saving way. Please raise up workers for the harvest in Asia. I think I want to say they're in Thailand specifically, Lord, but you know where they are. You know what needs they have. And you know what, what type of wisdom that they need in uh, working with churches and doing the administration and getting their visas and all the little things that come to play, all the little things that bear so heavily upon them. You know what they need. You know the work that they do. And we pray that you would please have mercy on them, Father, and that you would please have mercy on the work that they are doing and that you would bless their labors, Lord. Uh, with, with great success, both numerical, like conversions and, and, and people coming to Christ and, and knowing him, but then also for spiritual, uh, like the quality, the depth of, of their Christianity, they to be sanctified and that they would be holy and that you would, um, that, that that fellowship would be sweet, Lord. And we pray these things, Lord, for us as well. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, y'all. If you have prayer requests, again, notmanynoble at gmail.com. 
uh, show notes for, for the podcast are at notmanynoble.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for putting up with me. Thanks for your patience with me. And I will talk with you 